Let's bring in right now Rogers Chair in the American Presidency at Vanderbilt University, historian John Meacham. Uh, Meacham, first of all, just talk about overall uh, President Biden's trip uh, into this hot war zone. I mean, truly, so soon after the war has broken out, it is still raging and with many questions and mysteries as to who has done what. What do you make of the trip? How does it stand in history, but also what are some of the severe challenges he is facing? Well, the president's now done this twice. Uh, he went to yeah. Kiev, remember. Uh, he went to Ukraine. He, uh, this is a remarkable moment uh, in the history of the American presidency for a president to go this soon into this kind of climate. I think it suggests the tactile uh, and intimate nature uh, of Biden's sense of how important this is, of the president's personal diplomacy. He's been doing this a very long time, and he knows the players. He understands that, yes, there are broad uh, structural forces that, that shape the world, but there are moments when a personal word, a tactile encounter can nudge the arc of events in a good direction. And one of the things a president has, one of the most precious things in presidential capital, if you will, is his time. And the president is choosing to invest this time in what he understands to be, I shouldn't speak for him, but what I mm -hmm. believe he thinks is a uh, global struggle of, in fact, decency and dignity and order against these elemental forces of chaos and terror. And yes, there are extraordinary complications. And yes, uh, all of that is, is stipulated. He believes, uh, as he has said and said in the, those powerful uh, remarks uh, last week, he believes that we have to stand with Israel against terror. That doesn't mean we condone indiscriminate violence by any means, but it does mean that in a complicated and difficult time, when American interests, when the broad historical interests of liberalism in the pure sense of human rights, of self-determination, when those rights are under assault, you stand with those who are most closely stand with you. Mm hmm. So I'm just curious uh, about the players and the dynamics involved. You know, when when uh, President Biden went to Kiev, he was dealing with Volodymyr Zelensky. Um, Ukraine has its problems. There's no question. Um, but would you consider Zelensky to be a trusting partner? Let me add to that question. Um, he's going to now to Israel. He's there right now. We're about to watch him meet with Israel's war cabinet. He's met with Benjamin Netanyahu. Talk about the dynamics in that relationship. Is Benjamin Netanyahu a trusting partner, given the fact that he's facing a lot of criticism in Israel right now for creating many distractions that may have led to this? And I just wonder how the president navigates that dynamic. Is it similar? Is it a parallel? Or are there some differences with Benjamin Netanyahu? I think there are differences. I think you've laid it out uh, quite clearly. And I don't think anyone should believe that this is uh, like Mary Poppins, where an American president flies into something uh, and brings immediate order to it. Uh, I think we should be grown up about our expectations. I think that this is vitally important. That does not mean it is simple. Uh, right. It means that this is a perennial uh, issue of life and death, as we're seeing again and again and again. And here's an American president who has been doing this again a very long time, uh, both in the Senate, as vice president, as president. Uh, every once in a while, you end up with an American president who has extraordinary experience in these spheres. You know this. Uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, when, the, when it came time to put together a global coalition to oppose uh, Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, he knew everyone. 
President Biden has a long time, I think it's been described as long time, but not uh, entirely uh, warm a relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. One of the things about history, one of the things about reality, I should say, which is just history as it unfolds, is that you deal with the world as you find it. And President mm -hmm. Biden clearly thinks that his being there has a better chance of producing a better result than if he stayed away. And so, uh, we will find all the out. Other, yeah, the, I mean, we, you have the leader of Georgia, the, the me members of the summit pulling out and canceling the most important part of the trip, one would argue, as it pertains to the lives of potentially thousands of people. Um, and yet, Arab countries pull away, Biden goes in, very Joe Biden, uh, obviously. But it, is the purpose to lead by example? I think so. I think it's to say, let me put it this way, <laughs> and I don't know, I'm not in the room, but it seems to me that if he is there, he is showing a level of con care and concern that, as we've just said, is without precedent. And one of the ways politics works is your interlocutor has to believe that you, in fact, share their interests and that you're not simply in it for yourself. And so here's one of the things that can happen. President Biden will be able to look at the war cabinet, will be able to look at Benjamin Netanyahu, and as uh, President Biden probably would say, hey, man, I'm here. <laughs> Now, let's yep. work this out, right? I promise you the word man is going to be used. And I, I don't mean to make, make light of it, but yeah. this happened with Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, right? It mattered that they were in the room together. It, it matters to political beings that you pay the respect, that you signal that you are in fact, uh, you understand where they are. James Baker, one of the great secretaries of state in American history, his, his entire memoir was called The Politics of Diplomacy. And his thesis was, you cannot conduct diplomacy if you do not understand that the people on the other side are political beings. And so you have this uh, politician of more than a half century standing in the American context who's going into the most fraught, one of the most fraught regions in the world at a time when there are clear issues to deal with, and he's there. And he's not lord, in a lordly way sending in instructions from Washington. He's there. Yeah. And as you say, it's very Biden-esque. It's personal. Mm -hmm. It's uh, hand to hand, you know, and it, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, right. obviously. But again, a president's capital is his time. The president cares about this. He thinks it's important. And American interests, I believe and hope, will be served.